Is it possible to visit all major observatories in the world covering every continent in the space of just 24 hours? ESO made a trip around the world in 80 telescopes during a live 24-hour webcast. Let's go behind the scenes to find out how it was done. This is the ESOcast, cutting-edge science and life behind the scenes of ESO, the European Southern Observatory, exploring the universe's ultimate frontier with our host Dr. J, aka Dr. Joe Liske. Hello and welcome to the ESOcast. In this episode, we're going to follow an incredible 24-hour live webcast that was produced at the ESO headquarters on April 3rd and 4th, 2009. This webcast was called Around the World in 80 Telescopes and it attracted well over 100,000 online viewers. The webcast was part of 100 Hours of Astronomy, a cornerstone project of the International Year of Astronomy 2009. Let's now go backstage to see how this record-breaking event unfolded. The ESO headquarters in Garching near Munich in Germany is hosting the live 24-hour webcast that will follow night and day around the globe and visit some 80 different observatories on the way. This is a major technical and logistical challenge. Preparations have been underway for months and with one day left to go, the pressure is on to get things ready. After a long final night of testing, the morning of the webcast is here. The atmosphere is buzzing and the project leader, Douglas Pierce Price, is pleased with the preparations. This is the culmination of a lot of extremely hard work by people here at ESO and of course at all of the observatories around the planet that will be visiting during this amazing 24-hour live webcast. Uh, things are very, very busy behind the scenes, but we're getting things in place, we're almost ready to go and we're looking forward to it. Before we delve into the rest of the day, what does it actually take to run a live webcast like this? Well, apart from having many wonderful observatories around the world to visit, you need a project leader that remains calm under pressure, a first-class production team, hilarious technical experts that put our guests at the observatories at ease, top-notch autocue operators, a web team, a professional-looking set, and six attention star presenters. Oh, and of course, an on-set blogger. Just a few minutes before the start of the webcast and some final adjustments are made. The Gemini North Observatory in Hawaii will be the first stop in a long journey around the world. Everybody is in position as the webcast begins. Hello, you're joining us for Around the World in 80 Telescopes, a live 24-hour webcast. The webcast is a unique chance to experience a snapshot of life at many different observatories around the globe and to find out what astronomers are actually doing at the telescopes and what they hope to discover. However, like many live events, the webcast is not without initial setbacks. Just over an hour into the broadcast, the streaming provider has a problem, leaving a blank screen for the thousands of viewers. All is not lost as the webcast continues with segments being recorded and uploaded online. Lee Pullen of the Cosmic Diary, another cornerstone project of the International Year of Astronomy 2009, is writing a behind-the-scenes live blog. His posts keep the audience informed, so nobody is left completely in the dark. After a tense and stressful half hour, we're back on air. Once again, the telescope tour is on track. With 24 hours of constant airtime, the webcast team work in shifts. People swap in and out of their positions, ensuring a continuous presence. The webcast is running smoothly, so Douglas takes an early evening break to eat a quick meal. The menu for the event was carefully chosen in order to keep the team happy through the long hours. Although the team could have had a selection of local Bavarian dishes, they opted for a range of international foods in honour of the event. Over halfway through the webcast, the day has gone well. Viewers watching from all over the world have emailed in feedback and questions to be read out by our hosts on air. And this is a question from uh, Julie, who writes in from the UK. The night shift team keep things running in the early hours, while Douglas finally gets just one hour of well-deserved rest. The dawn of the next day marks the final stages of the webcast. The tired and slightly delirious team receives a much-needed boost when the video from the Vatican Observatory is broadcast. 
Even after 20 hours, the team spirit is still high. Finally, the webcast is over. And so this brings us, after 24 hours of webcasting, to the end of Around the World in 80 Telescopes. We'd also like With more than 24 hours of continuous interviews completed, the time has come to celebrate the successful event with a glass of champagne. I hope you enjoyed the look behind the scenes of Around the World in 80 Telescopes. It was an incredible event, but I'm sure there will be other spectacular outreach activities from ESO in the future. This is Dr. J signing off for the ESOcast. Join me again next time for another cosmic adventure. In the framework of the International Year of Astronomy 2009, ESO has launched a new project aimed at connecting the sky as seen by the unaided eye with that seen by hobby and professional astronomers. The project, called Giga Galaxy Zoom, reveals three amazing ultra-high resolution images of the night sky that online stargazers can zoom in on and explore in an incredible level of detail. The reward is the most breathtaking dive ever made into our galaxy, linking the sky seen by all with the cosmos studied by astronomers. This is the ESOcast, cutting-edge science and life behind the scenes of ESO, the European Southern Observatory. In today's ESOcast, we will explore the unique and amazing Giga Galaxy Zoom project, which reveals the whole night sky as it appears with the unaided eye from one of the darkest deserts on Earth. The project allows users to zoom in on a rich region of the Milky Way with a magnification offered by a hobby telescope, and then to go one step further, using the power of a professional telescope to explore details of an iconic nebula. Most of the photographs comprising the three Giga Galaxy zoom images were taken from La Silla and Paranal, two of ESO's observing sites in Chile. The wonderful quality of the images is a testament to the splendor of the night sky at these ESO sites, which are the most productive astronomical observatories in the world. The first image, taken by the renowned French writer and astrophotographer Serge Brunier, aims to present the sky as people have experienced it the world over, though in the far greater detail offered by top-notch stargazing conditions and incorporating the view from both hemispheres. Brunier spent several weeks capturing the sky with a digital camera, mostly from ESO observatories at La Silla and Paranal in Chile. To cover the full arc of the Milky Way, Brunier also made a week-long trip to La Palma, one of the Canary Islands, to photograph the northern skies. The final image, the result of 120 hours of observations, provides a magnificent 800 million pixel panorama of the whole Milky Way. This 360 degree panoramic image covering the entire celestial sphere reveals the cosmic landscape that surrounds our tiny blue planet. The plane of our Milky Way galaxy, which we see edge-on from our perspective on Earth, cuts a luminous swathe across the image, almost as if we were looking at the Milky Way from the outside. The second image was captured by another renowned astrophotographer named Stéphane Guizard. Stéphane is also the chief optician at the ESO Paranal Observatory, where he is responsible for making sure that the very large telescope has the best possible optical quality. This second image directly benefits from the dark and cloudless sky at Paranal, one of the best observing sites on the planet and from Stefan's professional expertise as an optical engineer specializing in telescopes. To snap a photographic mosaic of the central parts of our galactic home, 
Stefan relied on a 10 cm aperture hobby telescope coupled with a CCD camera. The final result produced by Stefan, together with ESO's image experts, is a color image of the Milky Way containing more than 340 million pixels. The image combines about 1,200 photos for a total exposure time of at least 250 hours. The resulting image beautifully exhibits the sky, spanning several constellations from Sagittarius to Scorpius, an area that includes the galactic center, the famous lagoon and Trifid nebulae on the left, and the colorful Antares and Rho Ophiuchus region on the right. The third image of the Giga Galaxy Zoom project illustrates the power of professional astronomy. It covers a one degree field of view, or about two times the width of the full moon, using the wide field imager attached to the MPG ESO 2.2 meter telescope at the ESO La Silla Observatory. This camera has already created several of the most iconic pictures produced by ESO. The professional image is a zoom into the attractive and intriguing Lagoon Nebula. Scattered dark patches within this 100 light-year wide nebula are huge clouds of gas and dust collapsing under their own weight. Soon they will give birth to clusters of young glowing stars. Together, these three stunning images allow for unique exploration of a magnificently detailed cosmic environment from the scale seen by the unaided eye into the astronomer's realm. Enjoy this dive into the starry depths of our Milky Way, from the eye to the telescope. ESO has just released a stunning new image of a field of stars towards the constellation of Carina. This striking view is ablaze with a flurry of stars of all colours and brightness, some of which glow against a backdrop of gas and dust clouds. A complex nebula created by previous violent ejections surrounds an unusual star in the middle of this field. Astronomers have discovered that this star has a companion. Interactions in this double star system Surrounded by a dusty disk may be the engine fueling the star's remarkable nebula. This is the ESOcast, cutting-edge science and life behind the scenes of ESO, the European Southern Observatory. Exploring the far reaches of the universe with our host Dr. J, aka Dr. Joe Liska. Hello and welcome to this episode of the ESOcast. My name is Gaty Hussain. I'm standing in this time for Dr. J who is on vacation. Today we will explore a new beautiful ESO image that shows a rich field of stars centered on a star called HD 87643. A study using a new set of observations has provided astronomers with the best ever views of this exotic type of star. The image, taken in the direction of the constellation of Carina, shows a dense starscape towards the Carina arm of the Milky Way galaxy. 
As we come closer, we see the star HD 87643, a so-called BE star at a distance of 4,900 light-years. The image beautifully shows the extended nebula of gas and dust that reflects the light from the star. The central star's wind appears to have shaped the nebula, leaving bright, ragged tendrils of gas and dust. A careful investigation of these features seems to indicate that there are regular ejections of matter from the star every 15 to 50 years. The comprehensive new study uses three different instruments in ESA's arsenal of telescopes. First, for the big overview, astronomers turn to the Wide Field Imager on the MPG ESO 2.2 meter telescope at the 2,400 meter high La Silla Observatory in Chile. Secondly, the team used ESO's Very Large Telescope, or the VLT, at Paranal. Here, the NACO Adaptive Optics Instrument allowed astronomers to obtain an image of the star free from the blurring effects of the atmosphere. To probe the object even further, the team then obtained an image with the Very Large Telescope Interferometer, or the VLTI for short. The sheer range of the set of observations from the panoramic wide field imager shot to the fine details of the VLTI observations corresponds to a zoom in factor of 60,000 between the two extremes. With this data, the astronomers found out that HD 87643 has a companion star located at about 50 times the Earth Sun distance and is embedded in a compact dust shell. The two stars probably orbit each other in a period between 20 and 50 years. The presence of this companion could provide an explanation for the regular ejection of matter from HD 87643 that forms its amazing nebula. As the companion star moves in a highly elliptical or oval-shaped orbit, it regularly comes very close to HD 87643 and triggers an ejection of stellar material. This celestial tango may be what generates the gorgeous nebula. Once again, science has helped us explore and explain the beauty of the universe. This is Gaiti Hussain signing off for the ESOcast. Join us again next time for another cosmic adventure. The holy grail of current exoplanet research is the detection of a rocky, Earth-like planet in the habitable zone, a region around the host star with the right conditions for water to be liquid on their surface. The latest result from the European Southern Observatory comes closer than ever to attaining these goals. This is the ESOcast cutting-edge science and life behind the scenes of ESO, the European Southern Observatory, exploring the universe's ultimate frontier with our host Dr. J, a.k.a. Dr. Joe Liske. Hello and welcome to another episode of the ESOcast. This time we have some very exciting news for you. It's another major ESO discovery. We'd like to tell you about the discovery of the smallest, or rather lightest, and possibly most Earth-like planet so far discovered outside of our own solar system. We'd also like to report on yet another planet within the same system that has now been shown to lie within the habitable zone of its parent star, meaning that it could host liquid water and possibly even life. Gliese 581 is a seemingly inconspicuous red dwarf star located 20.5 light-years away in the constellation Libra, or the Scales. It is among the hundred closest stars to us and weighs only one-third the mass of the Sun. Such red dwarfs are intrinsically at least 50 times fainter than the Sun and are the most common stars in our galaxy. For astronomers studying exoplanets, red dwarfs are ideal targets for the search for low-mass planets where water could be liquid. Because such dwarfs emit less light, the habitable zone is much closer to them than it is around the Sun, which makes it easier to detect the planets. Professor Michel Mayor from the Geneva Observatory and his team of European astronomers have carefully observed Gliese 581 over the past four years using the world's leading planet-hunting instrument 
the Harp spectrograph on the ESO 3.6 meter telescope at the La Silla Observatory in Chile. Now what they found was that Gliese 581 is orbited by a planet that has only 1.9 times the mass of the Earth. This planet is known as Gliese 581e and it is the lightest and most Earth-like planet so far discovered outside of our own solar system. Now within the very same system, the team also refined the orbit of a previously known planet called Gliese 581d. What they found was that this planet is definitely within the habitable zone of its parent star. Now what that means is that the planet is just at the right distance from the star for any water that might be present at its surface to be liquid. If it were any closer, the radiation from the star would be too strong and the water would evaporate. If it were any further away, it would be too cold and the water would freeze. From previous observations, also done with the HARP spectrograph at ESO's La Silla Observatory and announced two years ago, this star was known to also harbor a system of three super-Earth planets. With Gliese 581e, the planetary system has four known planets, with masses of about 1.9 planet E, 16 planet B, 5 planet C, and 7 Earth masses planet D. The planet with the largest orbit in the system is Gliese 581d, and it takes about 66.8 days for one round trip around its parent star. Now because it orbits within the habitable zone of its star, this planet could be covered in liquid oceans, making it the first serious water world candidate. Thanks to Mayor and his team, we now know that the Gliese 581 system contains at least four exoplanets. These planets were discovered through the tiny wobble they cause to their host star as they move around, only about seven kilometers per hour, which equates to brisk walking speed. The discovery of Gliese 581e and the refinement of Gliese 581d's orbit were possible only due to HARP's unique precision and stability. Using the HARP spectrograph, Michel Maillot and his team of European exoplanet hunters are leading the way towards answering some of our most fundamental questions about life outside of our own solar system. They are confident that in the not too distant future, a truly Earth-like planet will be discovered. So stay tuned. This is Dr. J signing off for the ESOcast. Join us again next time for another cosmic adventure. At observatories worldwide, most of the glory goes to the astronomers who provide us with new vistas of the heavens. But this is only possible thanks to the many experienced technicians and engineers who accomplish amazing work behind the scenes. They work against the clock to ensure that the telescopes function optimally to deliver outstanding results. But what does an engineer at ESO's very large telescope actually do? This is the ESOcast, cutting-edge science and life behind the scenes of ESO, the European Southern Observatory. Exploring the universe's ultimate frontier with our host, Dr. J, a.k.a. Dr. Joe Liske. Welcome to another episode of the ESOcast. The completion of ESO's very large telescope in the year 2000 was not only an amazing scientific achievement, but was also a technological triumph. The VLT at Mount Paranal is the world's most advanced ground-based optical telescope and it attracts astronomers from all over the world. But this complex high-tech facility can only function because of the dedication of the Paranal engineering department. Highly skilled VLT engineers like Roberto Castillo work with unsurpassed precision against the clock to make sure that every single piece of high-tech machinery works perfectly. Let us now dive into an exciting day in the life of a VLT engineer. Roberto Castillo works in the VLT instrument team. He is responsible for part of the VLT instruments and, as unit telescope manager, he is in charge of handing over one of the four giant 8.2 meter telescopes to the astronomers at the beginning of each night. First stop, the office. Roberto checks on the workload and identifies the most critical issues that must be dealt with. 
He interacts closely with colleagues and scientists who wish to have some of the instruments checked during that afternoon. The countdown has begun. All problems must be solved before a sunset. Although this might seem a job like any other, the extreme complexity of the VLT presents a parallel engineer with a variety of challenging tasks, each of which must be performed quickly and with supreme precision. What's going on? Roberto's on the radio. Paranal, we have a problem. I go to the telescope to check the instrument. The problem must be solved. Roberto leaves his office and crosses the platform. Problems usually don't come alone. On his way to the telescope, Roberto interacts with his colleagues and checks some components. Each of the four giant VLT telescopes is equipped with several extremely powerful, yet very delicate instruments. An engineer at Paranal must have a specialized knowledge of all the components in case of technical malfunctions to ensure that the VLT is ready for observations every day and downtime due to technical problems is kept to a minimum. As sunset slowly approaches, Roberto is already engaged with his next important activity the daily coordination meeting in the control building. This is where all the scientists and engineers get together to report on all the important issues encountered during the day and to prepare for the night. For Roberto, this moment is especially crucial. As a unit telescope manager, he's responsible for handing over the telescope in perfect shape to the astronomers for the night. Let's follow him as time ticks away. Each minute becomes even more precious as sunset draws near. Roberto rushes to his telescope to initiate the standard start-up sequence. The telescope can be handed over to operations only when every single task in his checklist is complete. This moment is the culmination of all of Roberto's hard work, and with smooth and precise commands, the steel and glass giant gently awakes. The sun has now completely set. This is the moment of truth. Roberto is now able to say the magic words to the telescope operator. Attention, UT2 operator. Go ahead. The telescope is ready for you. So, this finally marks the end of Roberto's challenging workday. The astronomers now take control of the VLT and the telescope will soon come to life. As night falls over Paranel and as the celestial display takes the front seat, Roberto is heading back to the Residencia to enjoy a relaxing dinner with his colleagues. Although his day is officially over, Roberto must remain reachable and prepared to react swiftly in case a problem should arise at the VLT during the night. Behind every great astronomer stands a great engineer. This is Dr. J signing off for the ESOCast. Join me again next time for another cosmic adventure.